weeks, but I always feel right. Breathing the beauty of cradling pride. Perfectly pleasant, but ugly inside. Forgive me for all the stars in my eyes. I hope you all enjoyed that short video. Like I said in that edit, this is a mob farm that is designed to be built. Some of you are probably confused as to what that means, and the answer why is, or to that, is that many farms that end up being designed are either not really intended to be actually used in survival, EOL being the greatest example of that, or the designer didn't really take into consideration build effort and cost in comparison with the rates. Now that can be a little subjective. Um, but this is just my take on it. Now, this farm may not be the absolute fastest, but it's not far off. The ease of building and zero bedrock breaking required, combined with its lag friendliness, far outweigh the few thousand rates you lose compared to the fastest designs, in my opinion. Now, on the topic of lag friendliness, the farm itself runs at 8 MSBT uh, on a single cap on an i7 7700K. And the, most la the laggiest thing in this farm is actually the item entities themselves. Um, that's just because the item lifetime is uh, relatively high. The hopper carts, um, even though they have a reputation for being extremely laggy, really aren't bad at all. They don't even add up to 1ms, so they're really a non-issue. And when turned off, the farm is uh, fully hopper locked, which is pretty nice. And if you uh, are a stickler uh, and don't want any passive lag, uh, whether you built this farm close to a location you visit very often or you just don't like it. Um, since this is not a farm that you really are going to run very often, or at least it's not really that optimal to do so, um, when you're done you can just simply kill the minecarts. That's a pro-life hack for you. But it's up to you. Obviously the kill floor is pretty simple to build, and also, despite how they look, the spawn pads really aren't that bad either. I try and uh, kept the different types of blocks, um, the number of different types of blocks to a minimum to streamline that process. Now let's go over the cost. I'll just pull up the material list. So the only non-renewable resources that, that is really required in this farm are, is the quartz and um, that's really negligible. Um, doesn't even add up to 700 pieces of quartz. You can get that in 15 minutes. The what's it called? The red stained glass in the killer floor can be replaced with solid blocks. I just used stained glass because it looks better. The terracotta can be any solid block, and the glazed terracotta can be melons, uh, if you like. So, really, all of the materials can be pretty easily obtained. The only thing that you might have issue with. Um, is the birch leaves possibly, but if you build something like TT's leaf farm, you can get that in one overnight AFK session. I'll link that in the description. Now, why this farm's rates are so close to KK and Red's design uh, is just because it's benefiting from overspawning so much. At a spawn pad density of 50%, uh, even though it uses one more subchunk, its comparative density is still higher and also it has perfect fact spawning, which means no solid blocks at foot level. And finally, or second to finally I guess, the main improvement you can make to this farm is attaching an actual kill floor. So that means uh, you could just raise up the, uh, raise it up. The mobs would have a lower lifetime overall, and um, the mobs that don't die you just push over into lava. But that would be, but one, that increases the cost of build and build effort overall, as well as um, it would actually make it laggier. You have pistons firing as well as it requires hoppers in the kill floor because the fastest way to to kill the mobs that don't die is lava and every anytime you have lava you basically are re required to use hoppers or unless uh, or else you just lose uh, 
a decent chunk of items, which would defeat the purpose of having a kill uh, a kill floor like that in this farm. Um, finally, I already wired uh, the on-off switch completely for you, so this farm is completely ready to be built in survival. All you need is the required materials and a perimeter, and then it's ready to go. This is the location of that here. The world download will be in the description. Thanks as always, and bye-bye.